Hello and thank you for joining us on our study Evangelist the Verse and today we continue to study the word of God uh, because the word of God is our hope uh, like it says in um, in the very same chapter that we'll be looking at uh, verse number 4 so if you open Romans chapter 15 and verse number 4 it says that uh, the scriptures were written for our learning that we through them might have patience and have comfort and have hope and and I find that verse very very encouraging especially if you're going through something uh, the word of god is always there for you like my favorite verse says in uh, Jeremiah 16:15 thy words were found and i did eat them and thy words were the joy and rejoicing of mine heart. That verse in Romans 15:4 says, "For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope." I pray that as we finish today, as uh, at the end of this study, you will have hope through the scriptures. You will have hope through the love of Jesus Christ. Our title today is like-minded. But before we even continue, allow me to say a quick word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for being our Father. Thank you so much for creating us. And Lord, even though we sinned, thank you so much for redeeming us. And so Lord, we are yours like we saw yesterday. You are our Father. We are yours by creation, we are yours by redemption. And so Lord, as we open the word to look into a verse, a scripture, let it not be just a text that we're looking at on from an academic standpoint, but Lord, let it be you because words without you have no meaning. And so Lord, I pray that you give us the spirit that would guide us into your truth and enable us to obey your truth. in Christ name I ask amen so our title today is like minded and it's based on Romans chapter 15 and verse 5 which is our verse of the day if you read Romans 15 it's basically speaking about living a life that blesses others and this would be a fulfillment of the golden rule love others as you love yourself do unto others as you would have them do unto you now this is very this concept is very counter cultural in fact i would say it's counter human because humans are naturally selfish and want to be first before and above everybody else and so we are taught in schools that you have to look out for for your own life and make sure that you are satisfied make sure that you do what you want it's always about you 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 the companies will on, always portray it as if life is all about you you but what this is teaching us and we'll, we'll look into the verses in a minute is teaching us to live for others a life of service and we'll be looking at where that concept is taken from this concept of selflessness as opposed to selfishness which is really the the great drive that drives human actions where do we get selflessness from and that's what we will be looking at if you read verse number 1 of Romans 15 there it says we then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves as opposed to evolutionism which teaches that uh, the the fittest survive so survival for the fittest in the christian life in in the life of in a life that assimilates heaven there is no survival for the fittest there is survival for everyone there is salvation for everyone salvation is given to the greeks salvation is given to the gentiles there's only one name given under heaven by which all might be saved and god wishes that and wants that all should be saved and so we see the beauty of god in that he teaches us that we who are strong or if you think you are strong 
and you see somebody who is weak, help them, lift them up. Let every one of us not please himself, but please his neighbor for his good edification. So we are to help others. We are to wish them good. We are to wish them well, help them achieve their goals. But these goals have to be good goals, of course. This should be things we help others not to please them. And, and that's the, the tricky part. We are to please others, not just to please them as they would have themselves pleased, but to help them to reach a higher standard, to help them to reach, to become better persons. Here we are called to lift up our brothers and sisters when they fall or make mistakes instead of judging them. This is a simple call to putting your neighbor first. A verse in Philippians chapter 2, 3 to 4 puts this into perspective. There it says, Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem the other better than themselves. This is very interesting. Never, never at all should you compare yourself with others. Instead, you must always esteem others of more value than you are. You must always esteem others better than yourself. And this is exactly what Christ did. It says, look not every man on his own doings, but every man also on the things of others. Now that's very tricky. We're not only to just care about ourselves, but we also have to care about others. And of course, this is in the context of, of a, a Christian community. Because uh, the, the Apostle Paul is writing to the Romans, uh, the Romans that have been converted or people living in Rome that have been converted to Christianity or who have accepted Jesus Christ as their personal savior. And so in that community, they are to help one another, especially that there is persecution going on. And so they should hold hands together and uh, be of the same mind. It says in... Uh, um, Philippians chapter 2 verse 5, let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. And this explains how we can reach the standard of this golden rule. Love others as you love yourself. How can we attain that? It's honestly humanly impossible to love another person more than you love yourself. Because it's, for, it's a foreign concept. It's, it's not in the human genome. It's something divine. And so let this mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. See, only as we look to Jesus Christ, the express image of God, according to Hebrews 1, can we fully and truly love others like we do ourselves. Jesus is the ultimate example of one who did not please himself, but put others first. In verse number 5, which is the verse of the day, Apostle Paul prays for the fulfillment of this attitude in Romans, uh, in the Romans, and by extension to us as well. He says, Now the God of patience and consolation grant you to be like-minded one toward another, according to Jesus Christ. In this verse, Paul emphasizes that the patience to bear with others, other people's mistakes, the patience to help others, the patience of self-denial and temperance and discipline, and putting others first is not a human achievement but the working of the Holy Spirit. God is the source of patience. In his prayer for patience, he also prays for, uh, he also prays that they all unite, that they may be one in mind, and that ye may with one mind and one mouth glorify God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So he gives a hint here and says, I'm also praying for your unity, that when you unite with one mouth, and one mind, God should be glorified. So he's praying for God's glory. But for God to be glorified, we have to unite. It's very connected. 
God will never be glorified when we are disunited. There are a few verses I want you to consider. John 13, 35. It says, By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one to another. This is the ultimate goal. Knowing that we are one, we can help each other and strengthen one another because like Paul depicts, we are the body of Christ. But even much deeper, if you read John 17, 20, Jesus prays and I believe that Jesus is still praying this prayer today. He said, neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word, that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. That's very deep. And so God calls us into the unity of faith, that we may be one, as he is one with the Father. That means differences of opinion must be yielded, that all men may come into union with the body, that they may have one mind and one judgment, according to 1 Corinthians 1.10. I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that they may be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Now the God of patience and consolation grant you to be like-minded one toward another according to Christ Jesus, that ye may with one mind and one mouth glorify God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Fulfill ye my joy, it says in, 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 a certain, uh, in Philippians 2, 2, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and of the same mind. Now these are very sweet instructions and it's, it's very important because if we are disunited, there's no way we can represent God's image. Because the whole point of God um, investing in us is so that he can reproduce and, and reproduce his character in us and show himself in us. But God is one, so we have to be one. If we are not one, we are by no way connected to the Father. We are, we are doing our own thing. Because God is love and God is one. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is one. And so we face a challenge today because when you look around, you see that Christianity is the most divided uh, religion in the world. You have thousands and thousands of denominations around the world. And you wonder if we even believe the same thing. Truth is we don't. There's dozens of theologies and doctrines that people come up with and they believe it. And so we find different sects and different groups of people who believe supposedly in Jesus Christ, but believe in him in different ways. That's not Christ's prayer, my friend. If, if you know there's something you believe in that's not biblical, put it aside and come together into the unity of faith. Especially in times where Christianity and Jesus Christ are marginalized. Especially in a time uh, where Christians are being persecuted around the world. We have to come together in the unity of faith. To have the same mind as did Jesus. Now, uh, this verse by no means does not teach that we are to, uh, we are to yield to a person's understanding. For example, there's a priest or a pastor or whatever you want to call him that has this understanding of the Bible. That's not what the Bible is teaching. The Bible is teaching that you have the same mind as did Jesus Christ. And imagine if we all have the same mind as did Jesus, we'll all be the same. We'll be like-minded. And this is Christ's prayer. Of all the prayers that Christ prayed, if you do this, you'll be answering the prayer of God. That's very deep right there. If you have the same mind as your brothers and sisters in the faith, you're answering God's prayer. And I think that's something very important that we are not to forget, especially that it's found in the word of God. And so we are to remind ourselves of these things, even as we see the day of the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ approaching. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hope to see you tomorrow for another evangelist.